All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the drive-thru. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Special shout-out to time. Time is this um, thing that humans has in have invented that put deadlines on ourselves and make our lives more stressful. So congrats on being able to do that. Okay? Not the magazine time. Not the, not the herb time. Do you have a lens in your left eyeglass? Are you sure? Is it in there? Okay, it looks like you didn't have one. Do you see what I see, Eve? Okay, there, now I can see it. Now I can see it. Okay, so, first of all, notation. Okay, that's a function. We've been doing a lot with that. Oftentimes, that just equals y. Huh? You might ask. Well, here's what I mean. You're pretty used to seeing a line written like that, right? That's y equals mx plus b. But other books prefer to write it like that. That means the exact same thing. There's no difference, okay? Got it? So that's one of the first things you should understand. Um, so for this first set, we'll just do number one. These are pretty easy. You're just plotting the numbers first. So zero, not that it's easy to plot them on these little mini graphs, but we'll figure it out. Zero, psych, zero, negative one, um, one, one, two, three, and 3, 5, and I get my straight edge, which I have to walk a long way for today. Sorry. Okay, so that was like a problem we could have done when we were in the seventh grade. Here comes the second part of the directions. Find the inverse of the relation. Graph the relation and its inverse. So there, we just graph the relation. The inverse relation is very simple. All you have to do is switch the x's and the y's. So we will write it as negative 1, 0. 1, 1 will stay where it is. This will turn into 3, 2. And this will turn into 5, 3, okay? So you get left 1 up 0, right 1 up 1, right 3 up 2, right 5 up 3. Okay, and so this would be F inverse of x, and this would be f of x, and that's all we're doing to start, okay? Inverse is called f minus 1 of x, and you've seen that notation one time in your life so far. Anyone remember where you've seen that little minus 1? All right, ready? You're sophomores. You just got your license. You got a lot of drama in your life. You got you. Some people have got their license. Some people haven't got their license. Some people have boyfriends and girlfriends. Some people don't have boyfriends and girlfriends. Drama all over the place. Then your geometry teacher was like, cosine of x is equal to six over eleven. Okay. Now. How do you get rid of cosine? Nope. Come on, you're going to need to... Anyone remember this? Yes, you do cosine inverse of both sides. You remember where this button is on your calculator? It's the second cosine button. Do you remember this? Those cancel, 
you get x is equal to the cosine inverse of 6 elevenths. And just because we started doing this, now we have to finish doing it. So I'll just tell you what the answer is. I'll hit second cosine 6 divided by 11. And you get 56 point nine four degrees. So what was the point of that? The point was just to show you that you have used this notation before. You've seen it on your calculator. And you've actually used it to solve equations before. Just letting you know that that's happened. It was just during your sophomore year. And you had way too much drama in your life. So you don't remember it. OK? All right. Here we go. Let's do the hardest one from this. In fact, let's do two of them. We'll do two of these. So graph y equals 3x minus 4. Uh, what's the slope of this equation at number 7? The slope is 3. Very good. What's the y-intercept, Savan? The y-intercept is negative 4. So uh, to do this, I just put a dot at negative 4. And then I go right 1 and go up how many? 3, because that's the slope. Right 1, up 3. Right 1, up 3. And there's the first part of the question is done, where it says graph the function. Okay? Or you could just say that this is y equals 3 x minus 4. Now, I'm lucky because I can change my um, colored pen. I, and on my key, I've tried to do that as well. If you guys want to, you can. But it doesn't matter. Here's what I need to tell you. To find the inverse of a function, there are two steps. Step 1, switch the x and the y. So literally, wherever there was an x, make it a y. And wherever there was a y, make it an x. And then step two is you need to solve this thing for y. OK, so how would I do that? Add 4, very good. So you get x plus 4 is 3y. Next step, divide each side by 3. And I need a little bit of room, so I'm going to write it down over here. You get y equals x plus 4 over 3. OK? Well, that's the same thing as y equals x over 3 plus 4 thirds. You can write it either way. I wrote it the second way because now I know what the slope is and what the intercept is. OK? Well, maybe it's not so easy for you. What's the y-intercept? That I know we can do. The, the y-intercept the is 1 and 1 third, or just 4 thirds. So it's just a little above 1. OK? And here, the slope. Oh, I know. I did these a different way. OK, we're fine. The slope is 1 third. x over 3 is the same thing as 1 third x. On my key, I did these a totally different way that I think you guys might prefer. So um, and here I'll go over 3, up 1. Over 3, up 1. You guys aren't going to love this. Over 3, up 1. And that is my inverse function. So I grab my straight edge. And it's something like that. OK? This is um, f prime, sorry, f negative 1 of x. OK? Let me show you a different way to do these. Where the y point is. This right here is 4 thirds. And then from there, I went over 3 up 1 because the slope was 1 third, rise over run. But that's pretty tricky. Okay, So hopefully you followed along with that. But let me give you, I think, 
a better strategy to do this one. Okay? So just listen. You don't have to do anything. You already did number seven. Instead of finding the inverse function, because really it just says graph each relation and its inverse. Okay? I think I could have taken a better approach to that one. So I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to encourage you to just do this next time. Bless you. Because both of the things that we learned are still true. Okay? So why don't we just plot some points? If you put in a 0, what do you get? Negative 4. Put in a 1, what do you get? Negative 1. Okay. Put in a 2. What do you get? You get 2. And then put in, let's say, a 4. 12 minus 4, 8. Okay. And then just plot those points. 0, negative 4. Does that say negative 4? Oh, no, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Um, we have 1, negative 1. 2, 2, and 4, comma, 8. Okay. And then we just get our straight edge. Actually, that one will be there. And then what do you think I'm going to tell you to do to find the inverse function? Yeah, just switch them like we did in the first set of directions. So then just, just do this. Negative 4, 0, negative 1, 1, 2, 2, 8, 4, and plot those. Negative 4, 0, uh, negative 1, 1, 2, 2, and 8, 4. And you'll find this looks exactly like what we just got but it's probably a lot easier for you to do, okay? So that would have been the better strategy on those. But notice, both ways worked, okay? If you're really good with your graphing calculator and you don't like this concept of plotting points, then maybe you should just plot this in your graphing calculator, copy it onto your graph, then solve that the way we did, plot that in your graphing calculator, copy it on your graph. That'd be another way you could do it doesn't matter to me, okay? Okay, moving on. Find the inverse. Is it a function? Okay, so similar directions as before, but now we have a new notation. So just start by getting rid of this f of x. Turn it into what? That's right, very good. So just turn it into y equals x plus 1 squared. Now, for the past couple weeks, when we have square rooted both sides of an equation, we've only considered the positive solutions. That's been a part of the directions that we've just been kind of glancing over. We haven't made a big deal of it. Now we need to pay very close attention to that because how do I get rid of this squared right here? If we're going to solve Oh, hold on, I'm moving too fast. Here. First thing I need to do is I need to switch the x and y's. And now what do I need to do? Do you remember how to find the inverse? You switch the x and y's, and then what was step two? You solve it for y, okay? You solve it for y. Now, what do I need to do to solve this thing for y? Now, first thing I need to do is square root both sides, okay? Here's what I'm telling you. If you square root both sides, now that is going to become a plus or minus, and you need to put that there. Okay? On the right side, it's gone. So you're just going to have y plus 1 is plus or minus the square root of x. Okay? We're solving this thing for y, so subtract 1 from both sides. And I'm just, you end up getting y equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 1. Thank you. Minus 1. All right, look. Now, here's what I'm telling you 
that you got to pay special attention. If you have a plus or minus, it is not a function. And the reason is, is it's going to end up being a horizontal parabola. And do you remember what test we used to test to see if something is a function? We used the vertical line test. So it's going to fail because it'll hit at two points. Okay, so that's old school, but that's good. That'll help you on your ACT. So, once again, in this section, the strategy is change the X and the Y, solve it for Y, and if it's a plus or minus, then it's not going to be a function, okay? Yes, if you need to, if basically, if you square root both sides, it's not going to be a function, okay? Because squaring root both sides will bring in this plus or minus. What's that? If you cube, I don't think we're going to, oh, what if you cube root both sides? Um, let's just do number 11 and see, okay? So we're going to move on to number 11 and see what happens if we cube root both sides. So I'm just going to kind of ignore this one on my video because we don't have enough space for it, okay? David, did you get your question answered? Okay. So, we start, this is number 11. We start by just making the notation look the way we want it to. So, we took out the f of x and we switched it with a y because they mean the same thing. Now, we switch our x with our y. What the heck is that? x equals 2y cubed over 5. Okay, now we don't have a parentheses on this one, so we are going to multiply both sides by 5 to start with this, okay? So you end up getting 5, you could divide, we're going to divide now. 5x equals 2y cubed, okay? Now we divide each side by 5, okay? Sorry, you divide each side by 2. You divide each side by 2, and you get, I'm just going to keep working down and ignore this, you get y cubed equals 5 halves times x. So yes, this is where we will take the cube root of both sides, and you get y equals the cube root of 5 halves x, okay? Now, when we take the cube root, it is not a plus or minus. Because what's the cube root of 8? 2. It's just 2. It's not negative 2. Because what's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2? That's negative 8, okay? So there are no plus or minuses with this one. So this one is, yes, it's a function. But if you don't know, if you're, not, if you're not sure, which I'm really not even that sure, let's just bust out our graphing calculator and graph y equals the cube root of 5 halves x. This ought to be easy to type in. Oops. Okay, can you hit the lights, Jack? All right, y equals, clear. All right, I am going to type it in as, instead of the cube root, I'm going to do 5 halves x. So 5x divided by 2, so 5 halves x to the 1 third power. Because that means the same thing. I, on some calculators, it's a great question, Adrian. On some calculators, I would need a parentheses on the one-third. And on this one, I don't. 
I just happen to know that. Let's see what it does. Okay. Looks good. Would that pass the vertical line test? Yes, it would. So I am correct. It is a function. Okay. And you guys have done awesome for listening to this video. 20 minutes is too long, so I'll stop there. Good luck. Boom!